And while that system has been sitting there ready to go for some time, the time of its release, the time of its launch, has not been apparent and clear until now. So I wish to share with you a date, a firm date, a date that will not be missed, but a date that has enormous historical significance that heralds the official launch of the Eucadian global financial system, a system called the Supreme Financial System based on credit, not debt. And the date for that is August the 15th. The, what's also known as the Day of Assumption, Assumption Day, also known as the day that the Jesuits themselves were first formed in 1534. The reason this day is selected, apart from the fact that the Jesuits are the overseers and the creators of the financial system that we currently see, they are the architects and the creators of the Sester KV Trusts, also known as the Fides Commissary Trust, as a foreign siders trust, that's the hidden secret trust that the system refuses steadfastly to dissolve. And we know more about why they won't dissolve them. We know that it's connected to baptism. We know that the entire banking system depends on the existence of these trusts and that the system lies every day and dishonors itself every day in disavowing that these trusts exist. But on August 15th, a package will be sent not only to the Vatican again, not only to the Jesuits again, but the same package will be directed to the Bank for International Settlement in Switzerland and to also King Carlos in Spain. And that package will include an instrument whereby 33 supreme credits and the underwriting of those 33 supreme credits by 3,300 spirit members of Eucadia, of One Heaven, those members being the most important pontiffs, the most important cardinals, the most important members of the ruling families and the most important doges of Venice, underwriting through their spirit and their unity, underwriting the validity of these 33 supreme credits. This will be sent to the Bank for International Settlement with the demand that equivalent value is redeemed by them, that they redeem the equivalent of 33 supreme credits of their currencies into accounts available to the societies of Eucadia. Now, 33 supreme credits in equivalent value to them is not a lot. 33 billion thereabouts is not a lot of money in a system that runs to trillions. But when they dishonor, and it's almost guaranteed that they will, they will be dishonoring their entire banking financial system officially. And that is the importance. So not only will they have dishonored because they will not have responded in the accounting of the dissolving in June the 12th, but on August the 15th, the Jesuits, the Vatican, the Bank for International Settlement, the ruling elite will have dishonored their entire financial banking system and the basis of which they have the right to create money. Now, remember, money, private and public, and the right to create money, the private side, the ecclesiastical side, has always been a realm controlled by very few. A priest class and forces, uh, sad to say, that have been on the dark side of the ledger. In the unity of Eucadia, those forces now are part of Eucadia, and no longer do we view dark and light. We only view one. We view those that are united and conscious and competent, and those that still cling to power who are suffering severe mental illness. There is no dark or light anymore. There's only the sane and the mentally ill. And sadly, there are lots of mentally ill people still in positions of power, and they will certainly will still be in power in August the 15th. So when they dishonour this, they dishonour 
not just 100 years or 200 years of rights, they dishonor, dishonor rights that go back to the first principles of creating private money and public money. They dishonor principles that go back thousands of years to ancient Egypt, to Karnak, Thebes, to the principles of temple, private money being converted into public money and the use of paper and the use of mediums of exchange. And when they do that, that is it. They cannot claim that again. And that means that none of their institutions have the right to be called banks because a bank, bar Ankh, is a temple, a temple for the issuing of private money and the conversion of private money to public money. They will have destroyed that right. They will not honour August the 15th. And that is the day that we launch our financial system. Now, I'm in exactly the same boat as you, exactly the same boat financially. It's why I asked for help. Not because I thought it was a nice thing to do, because I genuinely um, don't sit around with thousands of dollars. I have no assets. 25 years I have done this. My whole life, since the age of four, I have fought to do the right thing. And when I finally accepted, 25 years I've been doing this. I have nothing left to show. All the money that I've done has gone into what you now see. And at the same time, when this gets launched, I cannot and will not, cannot, have any tangible benefit from it. It will be purely for the benefit of the societies. But August 15th is the next day of history, and it's not too far away. So I look forward to sharing that with you and, and showing how that all comes together. So June the 12th was the Master Trust. August the 15th is the, uh, the financial system. And then we come into the uh, system of October the 31st. And October the 31st, known as All Saints Day, All Hallows, is the day that in 1517, a fellow by the name of Martin Luther nailed a historic document, one of the most historic documents in history, onto a church door where he claimed in his thesis that the basis and claims of power of the Roman cult were false. Well, by October 31st, my promise to you, it must be done. The 22 books of canon law will be completed. And the reason they'll be completed before October 31st is on that day, another package will be issued. But this one will not only be issued to the Vatican, to the Jesuits, to religious leaders, but it must also be symbolically posted on church notice boards and uh, stuck, but hopefully not by creating damage to, but stuck on the occasional church door. That one-page document, double-sided, double-sided one-page document will herald a private and a public writ that the 22 books of canon law, the canons of one heaven, is now the true canon law. And any other law that claims to be canon law is therefore null and void. And that, October the 31st, All Saints Day, the day that those that have departed come back to earth when all spirits are united that is the day we herald the public revelation of the existence of one heaven in eucadia well i mean we're dealing with people who are severely mentally ill and there's always the opportunity for the media to be used to spin a story there's always the opportunity for people to uh, say things that are untrue to write things that are untrue, and of course people do that all the time. But these dates and these moments are crucial for true history. If Judgment Day, and Judgment Day is December the 21st, 2011, is to mean every, anything and everything, it means that what we do between now and then must be for posterity. So that in 20, 30, 50 years, a thousand years, People look back and say, during these times, brave men and women, good men and women, did 
what was needed, gave them the opportunity to cure, to remedy, and they willingly, completely and totally dishonoured everything they stood for. That the people in power were nothing more than tyrants and fools. People crippled with their own egos. People that do not believe and did not uphold what was expected of them, even though they pretend to represent the very things uh, that we are talking about. They are rejecting their own rules. They are rejecting their own history. They are rejecting their own prophecy. And that is what we must see forward. So is this the last pope? Yes, it is. Because the office of pontiff has been dissolved. Whatever history says, whatever they claim from this point on, whatever they spin in 20 years' time, history will prove that Benedict was the last Roman pontiff. Absolutely. Did the global banking system come to an end? Did the system of usury and enslavement, did the system of trickery come to an end? Yes, it did on August the 15th. And no matter what they do and say, that will go down in history. And when did they cease to represent the law? When was it clear that their law was not the exclusive law, the normal law, the rule of law? When was the alternative to the law, the true law, presented and the light shined on their darkness? Well, history will show that that is October the 31st. And when were they judged and found wanting? When was their entire system placed in divine default? When was their claims of power ended? with no possible excuse to defer it, to plead ignorance, to say we didn't know, to say we didn't believe, to say we weren't told, history will show that that's December the 21st, 2011, in the Roman system. So that is what we're doing. That is what will be done. Now, of course, when we're dealing with people that don't believe anything, when we're dealing with people that hate themselves so much, when they are so dishonourable to everything in life, there's always a possibility that someone in complete stupidity thinks that they can step in and stop this timeline. This timeline of history will not be stopped. And the reason this timeline in history will not be stopped is that in spite of the occasional bridge trial, those that intellectually know the future depends on these things being done. Know that if these deadlines are dishonoured, then they automatically dissolve their rights. So in other words, if August 15 comes and for some reason every single instrument was intercepted, it doesn't stop the fact that the intention and the words, and over the weeks we'll talk about it, and you'll see it. All these things will be made before then. All that will happen is that they intervened in destiny, in history, and the date has come and gone. It still means it's a dishonor. The same for October 31st, the same for December 21st. But what I want to make clear to you is even if you feel frustrated in your own position and I, I get frustrated every day if you feel frustrated in your position because of money because of court because of prison because of what they've done to you and, and to those that you love please don't give up don't give up hope it doesn't mean that we've been abandoned it doesn't mean that this is some false trail we're not we're, we're not selling something that is not going to be uh, uh, delivered we're not even selling please consider the importance of history and history being a um, participation, something that cannot be a spectator. It is up to us to follow through with our beliefs. It's up to us to complete these elements. All right, well, I've covered enough, I think, on those big ticket items. What I'd like to do now in the half an hour that we've got uh, left is I want to go through the canons that have been updated on cognitive law. So if you haven't already, I, I ask you please to go to uh, 